What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. And today I am fired up because we are back working on the Samurai. It's been nearly a month since I've worked on this last. I've been focusing a lot on my Toyota 4Runner, doing some overland content. I've had a few different camping trips. And honestly, I just took a break from this build because it was getting a little bit overwhelming and it felt a little bit too much like work. I want some more creativity back, but we are past that. I'm feeling great about it. And today we're building a rear axle truss for my Toyota housing. On our agenda for today, we need to start by cleaning up a lot of the stock brackets and mounts that come on these Toyota housings. We don't have any use for them and we just want a clean slate for our axle truss and our link mounts. So we'll start by cleaning that up using the grinder and cutoff wheel. We're then gonna take a few different photos of the axle housing, throw those into SolidWorks, get designing on the truss, cut it out on the table, which is the funnest part, and then we'll do some assembling and welding to finalize this video and be ready for our next series where we're gonna finally start assembling the rear four link with the final designs. So as I'm sure you're aware, there's a lot of cutting and grinding needed to get this prepped. Thankfully, the plasma table does reduce a lot of that, makes it a little bit cleaner work, but I'm not gonna bore you with any of that content. We're gonna go ahead and get outside, clean this housing up, and then we're gonna get designing and cutting this thing. Since we've got the CNC plasma table, I want to put a bit of a unique twist on this axle truss. I figured it'd be cool to put in the DNS fabrication name on the truss itself. I've had a little bit of issues cutting fonts before in previous designs. So I've got a piece of quarter inch steel here that I'm gonna use for just doing a, a test run. So I'm gonna pull aside this large quarter inch plate that we're gonna build the axle truss with. And I'm gonna run just a quick design pattern to see how the font looks. If everything looks great and what we expect, we'll load everything up and cut out the proper truss. So guys, unfortunately, as you saw, the fabrication part of the DNS didn't really turn out too well. I'm happy with the DNS block letters, but that cursive fabrication really was just too small a lettering to make it work with how I was cutting. I think I can definitely make this work in the future, but not for this project. We're gonna take a loss here, but not a full loss. I'm gonna keep doing the DNS in the truss, just have to remove the fabrication part, and we're gonna get this going for the real truss. This machine is just proving more and more useful. So this is coming straight off the cut. No post-processing whatsoever. Look at the cleanliness of these cuts. There's a little bit of slag on the back, a little bit of cleanup to do, but this stuff just chips right off. This machine has just saved us so much time. When you finally dial in the proper settings, when you get your proper clean air and you find some tips that work well, for us, it's the hypertherm tips with the Razorwell plasma cutter. 
It's just one of the best shop tools that you can have, especially for this off-road building that we're doing. Things like trusses and link mounts just get so easy when you can really take it from concept into reality within a couple hours. Well, here we go with the first test fit. Let's see how this, see how it lines up and how our design work pays off. Ooh. I don't even need the magnets. That does not look slick. Wow, now that is wicked. Something that can be incredibly annoying on samurai axles is the fact that the diff breather is just integrated directly to the housing. The fact that I can just unscrew this, try to hold on to it, unscrew this, and I can just replace this with a barb fitting is just amazing. <laughs> and that's why I put this larger speed hole or gusset hole here so that when I have this axle housing, or sorry, the axle truss assembled, I can still get my fingers in here and I can assemble this diff breather if we ever have any issues with it. So for whatever reason, if this breaks off, if I have to replace it, it's really easy for me to access this and I'll do this the same on the other side of this axle truss as well. And then I'm gonna put a little access hole on the top so that I can run my hose out for the diff breather and then run that up the link tube. I'm sure you guys are a smart bunch. I think you can tell that this is working out and that I really like it. So the next step is gonna be cutting the next second version of these because we're gonna run two of these side by side and then we're gonna have a, a top plate and then this angled piece that goes down and that's gonna form the full structure of this truss. So I decided to cut these holes down here as well as go with these speed holes because if I get dirt stuck in here, I can just run a hose and pressure wash uh, the inside of this, get all the crud out, and then it can help by pouring out through these bottom sections. Hopefully I don't get big enough rocks in there that's gonna clog it, but that's not really the end of the world. At least I have some access to it and I can clean this thing out of mud and dirt. What we're gonna move to next is I want to measure where this diff breather is. Like I mentioned, I wanna put a hole in this top angle plate so I can run a hose through. I could even get a socket down in there if I need to. We're gonna make sure that we get this top plate wide enough for the link mounts to sit on there. And then we're gonna do our final cuts of the other pieces. We can do a quick little assembly. And really, I think that'll leave it up for this build for the truss. I'm not gonna do any finish welding here because I do wanna put everything under the Samurai. I want to get the link mounts on all of this because you never know where there's mistakes. And I don't wanna have this all finish welded, find a mistake and have to cut it all apart again. So it's gonna all just be tacked together. We'll make sure that the rear link assembly all runs up and down, I don't get any binding. And then we can do a final finish weld of all of our mounts, all of our trusses, and really dial in the back of this suspension. Throughout the design of this piece, somehow, we ended up being off by about half an inch. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of filling here on our welds. That's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna make this work. But this is why I cut things in stages when I'm trying to do conceptual design like this. Because now for the second side, 
what I can do is just lengthen this in my model by half an inch and will fit perfectly without needing to do any makeups in the welding. So this is the section here we ended up being off by half an inch. So like I mentioned, I'm just gonna go in here, we're gonna lengthen this out, and then we're gonna recut this piece for the other side to make sure it's properly dimensioned. Well, I love a good late night work session, but sometimes you definitely end up doing things you don't mean to do. In this situation, I accidentally lengthened the other side of the side plate. So I didn't resolve the issue I had, I just made another part longer than it should have been. So I'm gonna have to cut that off and I'm still gonna have to fill in some gaps with the weld here. So when I say I lengthened the other side, that's this portion here. You can see I extended this past about a half an inch, but that doesn't resolve my issue with the top section being too short. So I can either have this nice and flush down on the axle tube, or I can push this up be nice and flush at the top and then fill my welds down on the bottom. Either way, I'm definitely going to adjust my files for the next truss that I build because I love this design so far, but these are just two mistakes I've made from working a little bit too late and maybe being a little too tired. Although with that being said, we're very close to being finished cutting these parts. I just have that last top piece where my mounts will actually go. We're going to adjust that on the CAD file, make sure it looks good. We just need a six inch long piece, three and a half inches wide. Should be easy enough for me to do without messing up. And we're gonna get that cut. We'll place it on here. I'm gonna call it a night. I'll come back tomorrow, tack all this together, and we'll finish off this truss. What's up guys, I am back at the shop here. And last night I finished up that truss, I got everything together. It's not welded yet, but all the pieces are cut, we're assembled, things are looking really good for fitment. Well, that about finishes up for this truss. We've got all the pieces assembled, I've tacked everything together, and I'm loving the look of this. I think it looks super sweet with the DNS in here. I'm very excited that I went for that approach. I'm also pretty happy with the amount of room that I have in these cutouts. I can not only just service that breather valve, but I think I might even be able to get my welder in there and weld the bottom edge, the backside of the truss, without disassembling this again. I was thinking I might have to pull this off to do some finished welding, but I might be able to squeeze away with not doing that. We'll see how it goes. Next up on our list is gonna be assembling these rear link mounts onto this truss. In the last video, we finalized some of these mounts for the axle side. So this is just gonna sit on the bottom and I just need to finish up designing the top axle side mounts. that will sit on the top of this truss. If you guys enjoyed this content throughout this video, be sure to check out the rest of the Samurai videos. Also be sure to check out Nigel's content. He's putting a TDI in his Toyota pickup. I'm sure you guys know if you're a loyal subscriber. And if you're not, and you like this content, maybe you should consider subscribing. Maybe liking, maybe commenting. All of that definitely helps us out guys. 
It's been a journey doing these videos. We've been loving it and we have a ton more content coming your way. But that's gonna finish it up for this episode, guys. We finished off this truss and I love the look of it. We're gonna keep pushing on with the Samurai. We're gonna get this rear suspension finished up and we're gonna get some wheeling content with the Samurai for you guys. Stay tuned and we'll see you guys next time.